Hello everybody, in today's video we're going to be going over two different systems which are out in the Atlantic. We have Invest 94L and then Invest 93L. Technically we have another one uh, just to the south of 93L, but that one does not look like it'll develop much. These two could become Tropical Storms Mindy or Nicholas, depending on which one gets named first. Uh, we're going to be covering both of these storms uh, and giving you all the information you need to know in today's video. So make sure you are staying tuned all the way until the end just before we get into it i just want to this is the last video where i'm going to put this in but i just want to talk to you guys about the upload schedule change uh again because school is starting i'm not going to be able to do the regular morning uploads that i was doing during the summertime uh so most of these videos except for uh, on the weekends like today uh or on any holidays where i would have off uh it w i'm going to mainly be uploading between 4 and 6 p.m eastern time 3 to 5 central time 2 to 4 mountain time and 1 to 3 pacific time and again that's only for Monday through Friday videos uh, and that would be for Monday through Fridays where there's no holidays uh, where I would be off so just to put that in I've had in the past couple of videos just so that in case some people only watch one of the videos for that week or they skip around on which videos they want to watch so that everybody can kind of get the message because uh, again moving the upload time from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. is a big shift for uh, many people so I just want to get that out there so that you guys are all aware of the uh, change in schedule and again that's gonna be the last video where I'll put it in because I've had it in for the past I'd say three or four or even five videos so here's a look at the current National Weather Service page you can see that we have some air quality alerts in effect for some parts of Oregon in Washington, a bunch of Montana, as well as Wyoming, and then we have some red flag warnings in effect for some parts of Colorado and Nebraska. We have some heat advisories in effect for Southern California, as well as some excessive heat warnings for parts of California, Arizona, and Nevada. We have some wind advisories also for a little bit of uh, Indiana, Kentucky, Illinois, and uh, Missouri. And then other than that, we don't have many other watches or warnings currently. Yesterday, we had a high temperature of 115 degrees in Death Valley, California, with a tide low pressure, a low temperature of uh, 9 miles south of Albany, Wyoming. They got down to 28 degrees. So did Walden, Colorado. They're both within, I would say, 25, 50 miles of each other. So they're f still fairly fairly close to each other where those two low temperatures were taken uh, and they were also near high elevation so that probably paid, played a role into those colder temperatures uh, and speaking of the northwest I'm thinking that probably within the next uh, I would say probably by midweek uh, of next week I'll have a video up on uh, the snowstorm in the northwest for this area right here. It's about, uh, I would say it's about eight or nine days out right now. So I don't want to make a video now since all of that is going to change. Uh, but I'm probably going to make one towards midweek next week since we'll be only uh, three or four days out from it. And I'll actually have my snowfall forecast, uh, assuming that that storm is still uh, expected for those areas. So that'll be fun. I'll have my first snowfall forecast of the year for those areas and I'm definitely keeping uh, a, a close eye on all the models uh, just to see if there's any snow anywhere along the United States especially for areas that are lower in elevation uh, and if there is anything that's notable or sizable then I'll probably make a video on that um, as soon as possible looking at the precipitation uh, the highest precipitation report that was in Topsfield Maine where they got 3.52 inches of rainfall no snowfall reports yet yesterday. Here's a look at the five-day outlook from the National Hurricane Center. This is the 8 a.m. Eastern Time update. So they're probably, unless one of these becomes a tropical storm, the next update would be uh, 2 p.m. Eastern Time. So if you're watching this after 2 p.m. Eastern Time, go check the National Hurricane Center's website to see their updated forecast. But as of uh, this morning, uh, you can see that they have Invest 94L over the western Gulf of Mexico, which is prime for development because the east eastern Gulf of Mexico, this area is much cooler in waters because of uh, what we saw with uh, those tropical storms that went throughout there, Tropical Storm Ida, kind of used up all the warmer waters there. So the western part of the Gulf of Mexico, untapped, so you still have uh, 80, uh, 80, 80, 89 degree water temperatures in through there, so that's still very, very warm, 80% chance it develops within the next five days. 
for Invest 93L, that is the one uh, that's out in the Eastern Atlantic. That one has a 70% chance of developing within the next five days. Uh, and this is one of the storms where this could potentially be a long tracking one and make it fairly far uh, over to the east. And that's just something that we're going to have to kind of pay attention to. And then we have Disturbance 3, uh, which is just to the south of Invest 93L. And that one has a 20% uh, chance of developing within the next five days. If we look over uh, at Invest 94L, which could become Mindy or Nicholas, uh, depending on which one ends up developing first, you can see on the satellite that it is still fairly disorganized, uh, located at 17.5 degrees north by 91.5 degrees west, maximum winds of 25 miles per hour, minimum pressure of about 1,009 millibars. And again, we don't know the movement of this one just yet, uh, but you can see it's not too well organized at this point. If we look at uh, the model guidance for the system, uh, you can see that we are expecting this to stay in a fairly straight line to the west. If you look at some of the individual model guidance, some of that has it moving into the Caribbean. Uh, so other models have this moving closer to the east coast. So I would say watch out uh, around the 18th through the 20th if you're along the east coast for some sort of tropical development because some models are pointing to that. So just keep your eyes kind of peeled for some sort of tropical storm between the 18th and 20th if you live up and down the East Coast. Uh, again, nothing set in stone right now, but I would just say watch out for it. You're probably going to uh, see it a lot more later on uh, this week because it'll probably it'll come into view a little bit more. If you look at the model intensity guidance for this system, you can see that it's expected to stay below that tropical storm status. So we're not expecting this uh, to become too strong of a storm, but look at the amount of models that are kind of right along that line. So it is definitely possible that this quickly obtains tropical storm status and then potentially dips back down uh, into tropical depression status. That is certainly a possibility and something that we really need to pay attention to uh, and even if that does happen, again, it's not gonna. It's gonna be all the way out to sea. So when it's happening, when it's a tropical storm, it should be well out into the middle of the Atlantic. No land masses, no islands that would that would be impacted with that. Uh, we would want to pay a little bit more attention as it was moving uh, closer to the Caribbean. Uh, if it still maintains some of that strength, but again, we'll still have to see whether that'll happen or not. If you look at the sea surface temperatures and mainly focus on this area right here, because this is where it's going to be moving through, you can see that with some exception with that little blue spot there, the rest of that area is looking at above normal sea surface temperatures. Not by a lot, but it is above normal. And you can see uh, that especially for the area where it's developing, it's maybe even closer to one and a half or two degrees Celsius above normal. That's closer to two to four Fahrenheit above normal. If we look at the actual sea surface temperatures around where it's developing, you're looking at uh, right around, I would say, 27 or 28 degrees uh, Celsius, which is around 83 to 86 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's fairly warm waters. It's above that 75 degree threshold or that 80 degree threshold that you like to use for hurricane development. So it is warm enough for that, uh, but we still don't know whether that will actually happen. There are many other things in the atmosphere that are going to deter it from developing. Uh, and this is going to be a long-lived storm. So it, even if it's right here at, the, at this moment and it's all the way out over the eastern Atlantic, even if it kind of just stays as a weak, a very weak system, this could still be looking at a quite long-lived track. Maybe this becomes one of them that kind of spin out into the Atlantic that we're still making advisories for but we're not really too worried about so it could be one of those where it's not too notable after uh, a few uh, days just because we know it's already going out to sea looking at invest 93l it's still too dark within this area to get satellite imagery uh, so it's still uh, in the morning hours so the satellite imagery wasn't as good so i just used the water vapor behind it uh, and you can see that it's located at 13.4 degrees north by 19.2 degrees west, maximum winds of 30 miles per hour, minimum pressure of 1,010 millibars. So it is somewhat developed as of right now. Uh, you can see that there is some uh, development right there over the Yucatan Peninsula, but uh, it's not it's not that 
uh, it's not that organized. And by the way, uh, these uh, this uh, location and wins, I, I just realized that it was. Uh, this is the one for Invest 93L, which is out in the eastern Atlantic. So both of them kind of switched. So uh, this is not the correct location or wins. I uh, I'm, I'm sorry for that because I actually put the I put the opposite. I put the wrong satellite imagery for each one. So this is Invest 94L, uh, and it's located uh, somewhere around 20 north uh, by. 90 90 west so that's just a general estimate right there if we look at the uh, actual uh, the actual track of the storm most of these models including the GFS ensembles on the on the right side and the general track guidance on the left side you can see both both of them have this making a landfall somewhere within northern Mexico or southern Texas especially the coastal part of southern Texas and then Eventually, it would probably curve out into eastern Texas, somewhat like this. So that's what we're looking at right now. This also does not have a lot of time to develop. So you're looking at the time in between here and here, uh, maybe 48 hours, 72 hours at best. Uh, but you're going to have to do it quickly f uh, for the, the, the development of the storm because you're not dealing with a lot of time and space in between these two land masses. It's a very narrow area. Uh, where it could still develop. If we look at the uh, model intensity guidance for this system, you can see that we're expecting this one to either uh, attain tropical storm status very bare, uh, barely, but uh, the majority of the models have this below tropical storm status. Now we've seen this many times before this uh, this uh, summer season and this hurricane season so far, where you look at the models and all of them are showing, uh, or most of them with a couple of outliers are showing this being just a, a high-end tropical depression, not even becoming a tropical storm, and they end up maybe boosting it up by 5 miles per hour, and maybe it attains 40 knot wind speeds, and then barely uh, goes back down into a tropical depression. So even if it does become a named storm, I don't think this will become a big uh, deal for these areas, mostly just a rain event with uh, uh, some gusty winds every once in a while for some parts of coastal Texas. But other than that, it doesn't look like it'll be too big of a deal. If we look at the uh, sea surface temperatures, these are going to be important to the storm's development. Again, because it's only spending so long over water. This is going to be the area where it's going to be tracking over. And if you look at that, uh, you can see that it's crossing over to those 30 degrees Celsius waters. Uh, this is the only part of the Atlantic, the western half, uh, or the western half of the Gulf of Mexico is the only part that really has been untapped uh, so far. So you can see the remnants of grace or the kind of uh, the, uh, the water temperatures being upwelled, the cooler water is being upwelled from uh, Hurricane Grace. That's just north of the Yucatan. Uh, so that's something that you want you have to contend with. But it looks like this is going to be west of there. And and then if we look at Hurricane Ida, uh, which moved through here, that also brought in some cooler water temperatures. So that entire eastern half of the Atlantic still not that warm, uh, and it's still kind of dealing with the effects of Ida on the water temperatures. But the western half of the Gulf of Mexico was not impacted by that whatsoever. So uh, they are still under some warmer sea surface temperatures, up near 30 degrees Celsius, which is closer to 89 or not or 90 degrees. Fahrenheit so definitely warm enough for tropical development if you look at the sea surface temperature anomalies, you can see uh, where Ida and Grace were. They're a little bit uh, below normal or near normal. And then uh, where they did not move through, you can see that's where we're dealing with a uh, warmer uh, sea surface temperature. So on the order of about 1 to 3 degrees Celsius, uh, which is about 2 to 6 degrees Fahrenheit. So fairly warm uh, in these areas in terms of the temperatures uh, or the sea surface temperature anomalies. If we look at one more thing, and this is the final thing that we're going to look at for today, uh, looking at the upper air moisture field, uh, you can see here's the system right here. If we look at the wind barbs, uh, you're dealing with a little bit of a trough moving in through parts of uh, western Texas. So that's going to bring in a little bit of dry air, uh, and that's going to force uh, this storm to head into eastern Texas because it cannot interact with that trough. Uh, and what a lot of people don't realize is that in the atmosphere, in weather, uh, you're not going to want, you're not going to have two systems kind of just collide. Uh, might happen with low pressures, but definitely not with opposing forces like a high pressure and another area of low pressure. So you're going to need to look at some of the surrounding upper air elements, uh, which a lot of people don't do, uh, especially on the internet. They don't really look at the upper air elements. They're just looking at model guidance, 
how strong is this going to is this going to be according to x y or z model and they're not looking at the upper air elements which is going to really steer especially the track but the track is going to uh, impact the intensity of the storm so everything's kind of related you need to look at some of these other sy systems around the storm so you have this high pressure uh, further to the east you have some drier air uh, to the south of the system and then you have that trough uh, which is down into western texas so if you're looking at this and you're saying we have a little bit of drier air to the east that storm is not going to move through there you have another low pressure to the south which is going to also move in like this so that's forcing this storm uh, to the north and it's going to kind of move uh, straight to the east of that uh, trough so wherever the trough is you're going to probably want to go about 100 200 miles east of there and that's where you're going to see that tropical storm move over so you have to kind of look at all these things that are all going to be related uh, and if you're just looking at the storm well you're not if, if you're just looking at some models and kind of just pinpointing where they're putting it uh, you're not going to get a good forecast because you need to figure out why that's happening and what's driving uh, this system so if we did not have this upper trough right here there's absolutely nothing really stopping it from just going straight to the north uh, there would be nothing stopping it from moving even a little bit further west or uh, kind of moving north and then further to the northeast uh, but because of that trough which we have lingering right in here that's going to force this uh, to the east and that's going to be a big part of the storm's development and it's also one of the things that has this storm uh, maybe not moving from the Yucatan Peninsula and just west of there uh, on land into Mexico and then eventually uh, curving east with the trade winds. If we did not have that trough there, uh, then we would probably be dealing with a much weaker system that's on land, not able to develop. Uh, but because of that trough, again, which is right here, that's allowing the storm to stay marginally over water, which is going to help it with its development. So, again, everything is related uh, in the atmosphere. And you always want to look at, I, I love to look at the upper air maps. I think they're way more useful than any surface map that you're going to find. So, a lot of people, again, don't look at that. And I was talking about that yesterday in the winter forecast video a lot of people look at the surface maps uh, even that far out even five months in advance looking at February surface ma uh, maps that's not going to really do you anything you want to look at the upper air maps which typically are much more uh, accurate than anything you're going to see on the surface either with rainfall or snowfall so uh, again that's going to wrap it up for today's video if you have any questions or uh, you just have a comment or you have any inquiries leave a comment down below or again if it's anything personal that you want to ask me just leave a comment uh, or just leave an email uh, to my email address which is in the description down below if you also have any weather photos that you want to send in you could be featured in one of these videos if you send it in uh, to that email address as well and again I'll be responding to all uh, emails and comments uh, that you guys send me so again that is gonna wrap it up and I'll see you guys in the next one goodbye